Hello everyone, and welcome to the Nugget Report. I'm Build. And I'm Fact, and this is episode 5 of the Nugget Report. Now, as of the end of this week of what we're showing in the Nugget Report, it has been 29 days since we started our new Nugget account. So in other words, one month. Yeah, it's been one month since we started, and you know, a lot has happened in this last month. I mean, we started our new series, a lot of people have started watching it. And playing with us as well, which is really cool too. Yeah, and now, in our topic of the week, we're going to be telling everyone all of the nice things, all of the benefits, things that have happened in this last month, what we think of our first month of starting this game. Not to Again. mention all of the negatives as well. Yes. <laughs> so, without further ado, let's, let's get started. Let's get it on. So... It has been one month since we started this Nugget account, and um, one thing that we want to address here is the old notion that it is very hard to start a new account, especially now when everyone has really powerful planes and they all um, are super powerful and they can destroy everything and you're going to be stuck with nothing and you're a new player. So we actually want to argue that it's actually quite easy to start a new account. From our experiences from one month of starting a new account, we've actually found things very easy when it comes to progression. So leveling planes, going through the tree, all that kind of stuff. It's very, we found it very easy mm. compared to what it used to be like when the game first started. Now, of course, if you haven't played a arcade played game before, like in the Ace Combat series or Hawks or whatever, you're going to find this difficult. You're not going to have an easy time because... That's, that's you, the same with any game. But it's the same with any game. You're going to have to get used to it. Any first person shooter or anything, you're going to start out being a noob. You know? Yeah. We did. We did. When we first played Infinity, we were technically noobs. We just had a bit more experience from playing all the other Ace Combat games. Yeah, so... We have experience with Ace Combat before. We've been playing for years. Now, some people won't have that advantage. But what Project Aces has introduced are a load of things over the last two years in making things easier for new players in getting into Infinity. Mm. Of course, they want more people in. <laughs> Gives them more money. Of course. So, without further ado, let's start on the benefits that Project Aces have put into the game since launch. I think the first big feature that Project Aces has actually added into the game is the ticket and medal store. Yeah, in that you can get tickets in the game and you can buy planes uh, where you can unlock special planes just using 400 tickets or a couple medals from the store. Um, you can get some really powerful planes this way and you can pick your starting plane. Not to mention they give you 400 at the beginning, yeah, for picking your starter plane. So you can you can start the game with Pixie Morgan, which is what, 800 CST? Yeah. Yeah. You can have one of the most powerful planes in the game right off the bat now. As your starting plane, compared to what it used to be, where we had to use the F4E. And we had no choice there. We had to start with the F4E. I had to go onto a Moby Dick 2 and use a level one no 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 parts or anything f4e it wasn't yeah. it wasn't good nowadays you can just get pixie or get the raffle m or anything from the ticket store or use your medals that you get from the start as well now yeah and speaking of um the, this month's ticket store update you can actually get the f2a nagase now which is actually a pretty handy attacker pretty decent attacker yeah, it's actually quite a decent plane, and that's available for 400 tickets as well. Taurus is available as well now. Getting stuff in the ticket and medal stores will help you a lot in getting that first little push mm. into this game, because you'll have something good to start off with. You'll have a viable plane that can compete. Over the years, Project Aces has also made adjustments to the tutorial challenges as well. Yeah, uh, the tutorial challenges have changed a little bit since it started. Now the F-16C challenge now just gives you 100 aircraft research just straight off the bat. Um, there's another challenge that gives 40 special weapons reports as well. And the Far Eastern Front campaign mission also gives you another 100,000 credits, which kind of eases the pain of spending 900,000 credits to get 20 stock fuel. Now, 
the tutorial challenges were good, you know, when we first started out, but now they're just so generous. You end up getting like 300 like aircraft reports by the end of everything. Yeah, because of the first flight bonuses that are available every single day in the grey boxes. Now, these uh, give a uh, white tiger. You get White Tiger from that. You also get um, tickets, credits, and also free emblems if you want Because originally with White Tiger, we got it as like a notification reward. Yeah, I think it was the million download bonus. That's it. Mm. And now they've just stuck it in with the um, new player bonus thing. Yeah. Which is nice. And it's just, they give you so much now to start off with. And I just can't see... Why people are saying it's so hard to progress. Yeah, because Why White people Tiger... are saying this is a paid-to-win game. Yeah, because White Tiger is a decent plane. It's not great, but it's something that is quite handy if you need it. Yeah, exactly. Out of all the free-to-play games I've ever played, this is the first free-to-play game I've ever seen give new players this much stuff. Right, so now let's talk about one of the features in the game. Forced sortying. Now, this is when you can decide whether you, how much fuel you want to use in one sortie. If you want to use one fuel, two fuel, three fuel, all the way up to six fuel. Now, when the game started, you didn't have that choice until the weekend. Yep. You were forced to use one fuel every single sortie. So if you got like a level three raid, like during the week, that was kind of unlucky, actually. Yeah, you would really want that on the weekend. Now, you can easily just fall sortie on a level 3 raid or a level 4 raid during the week. They fixed that frustration of getting rage during the week and not being able to force. They thought, okay, we'll give four sorties all the time. Now, it's like, okay, there's time 6 during the weekend. So, yeah, it's, it's still unlucky, but not as bad as it used to be. Yeah, you still get a large amount of credits from a times three special raid, especially now that special raids now give double the credits as they did before. Um, a level one raid now gives 20,000 credits on a win uh, on an S rank. So you actually get a large amount of credits. And for the people who do spend money on fuel, you can pretty much fuel burn whenever you like well yeah lucky you lot <laughs> <laughs> meanwhile us free to plays we have to wait until the time sixes come That's yeah and um i actually heard one certain prominent player of the game being he he didn't like the fact that time sixes were constant and actually i humbly disagree with that statement it makes it so much easier for us if to do you things don't want to do it and you think it's taken away the fun because you're sorting in less don't do it just just don't do it. Yes, prominent player. It's so simple just to pick one fuel instead of six. Just don't do it. If you don't like it, don't do it. Yeah, I think the reason that they were doing it was because, like, oh, it's too easy now to level their planes now. and it, Who cares? Yeah, they're just making it easier for people. Yeah, we want things to be easier. We don't want things to be harder. <laughs> one thing we have noticed, um, this is more of a general thing, is that... Tournaments after the last update, there's less motivation for people to go and sortie loads to get the top rewards. Now, the Mobius, Rasguis, and Garm tournaments, those are these are three of the big protagonists mm -hmm. of the three biggest planes in the series. People were going absolutely crazy to try and get those planes. Nowadays, you don't need to. You're going for medals now that can be used to buy those planes. So you don't have to go crazy. You just go and save up 66 coins and you can have Mobius 1. Um, one thing this did do is it actually annoyed people that did try their very hardest to get those planes. <sighs> Oh, I only want the planes. No one else can have it. Ah, oh, screw the free to plays. They don't deserve it. Ah, there's that Sergeant Bob bloke. Uh, I've made. I've been able to, you know, copy his voice. Wow, that's pretty impressive. I know. Right. So yes, Mobius One is sixty-six coins, which is quite easy to get. It's only a few top thousands, and you can save that up quite quickly. I don't know. I think the people that did go for Mobius One on the first two occasions. They've lost the prestige of having <laughs> Mobius 1 now. <laughs> Again, who cares? Who actually cares? Who cares that I, you've lost your prestige? Look, all right, look how easy 
it is to get Yellow 13. Now, when the Yellow 13 tournament happened, I saved like a hundred fuel. Like we I had, both did. I had about a hundred stock fuel, and I went crazy for that plane. And when we did get it in the end, we were like really chuffed and just super happy. Now that it's so easy to get now, I, it's yeah, just okay. like yeah. <laughs> okay. I well, don't even I don't use it anymore. I don't know. We were both going meh when the second time I it mean, came up. Look at Omega. Yeah, my main my main fighter. Look at Omega. It's like four medals. Do I care? Four. Do I four actually Four medals, no. guys. Four medals. The only thing I care about at the end of the day is mine's level 16 and anyone else who buys it is probably going to level it to like five. Yeah. Think of it this way, people that have all the prestige in the world. Your one's higher leveled. You got it earlier. You got that uh, grant early. Yeah. So does it really matter that people can actually save up medals? And at the end of the day, you probably have enough money to level it up past, like, ten anyway. Yeah, of course. Now, you know, isn't it nice that the new players, the free-to-plays, can actually buy no! these planes? I'm Mobius 1. No one else is. I can be the only Mobius One. I want to be like my hero. <laughs> well, let me tell you now, Mobius One. If you really were Mobius One, you wouldn't be talking right now. And there we have it, folks. <laughs> <laughs> and time for our last pro. Probably the best thing Project Aces has ever added into this game by far. And that's the room restrictions. Players can now restrict their rooms in a number of ways. They can restrict it so only pistons can fly in it. They can restrict it so no pistons can fly in it. But the best one by far is they can restrict it so that players can only use planes with a CST of 1,500 or lower. Which basically helps players keep their rooms at a nice, even playing field. So, for those people concerned about the power creep... Well, you can cap that power creep at 1500 CST now. Getting problems with seal clubbers? Now, introducing room restrictions. That was a really good advertising impression there, huh? I was an advert guy back in the day. Sure you were. Mm. So, yeah, nuggets don't have a problem. As long as you set your room to an under 1500 room, you got no problems. Yeah, you're going to get that person, that one guy that decides to join your room with like a level 10 plane with like only two parts on it. But Actually, I wouldn't even say level 10. Not higher than that, actually. you got to think. My under 1500 Idolmaster bomber set has three parts on it and it's level 18. I'm an awful person. Y you're gonna get this. You're gonna get. You're gonna get wackheads like him joining your room. Boy. <laughs> <laughs> but honestly, it it's still even because yeah, they're like level fifteen, but they got no parts on. So you know they're still capped in one way or another. And to be fair, I am using a bomber on co-op. <laughs> You can probably beat me quite easily. No, it does help. It does help keep the playing field even. It's just sometimes you're going to get that one guy. But I think the best use, though, for the under, under 1500 restriction is challenges. Yes. By far, challenges, it has benefited challenge rooms the most out of any. Because that was always a problem. You would host a challenge room, yet people would take advantage of that you could be whatever you know cst or mr you want but at the end of the day you're in a challenge room and you're probably going to be using like a level one f14d for that extra a hundred thousand credits that you want to add people were able to take advantage of that but now not so much not so much now yeah and let's just say that is a very good benefit that project aces has added onto infinity it is so now we move on to our next section where we talk about the problems we face. Ah, uh, here we go. The big problems. Get ready for that one. <laughs> so the first problem we faced is, of course, seal clubbing. Of yeah. course, we're not seals, but we have joined a few rooms hosted by alleged seal clubbers. <laughs> as highlighted by our two police officers that came in on episode three. Now... Seal clubbers, you know, they're, they're not very nice. And one thing, you know, we just want to play our games. So, you know, we'll just join a room. Now, if we score anywhere close 
to where they're scoring. And it doesn't matter what we're using, well, no kick. It's anywhere close or above, we get kicked. Yeah. Regardless of our MR or our plane. It doesn't matter. They don't want us to score anywhere near them. Doesn't even matter if we got the S rank. Doesn't matter. They'll kick. Doesn't even matter if they win. Yeah. They don't care. <laughs> it's just, they see you as a threat, so they'll get rid of you. It's not nice. No, it isn't. In fact... This week, we actually ended up getting kicked from a room because I scored somewhat close to the host, and I was using Red Baron, of all things. Yeah, it's just... Ugh. But, I don't know, I've kind of come to accept them as a part of nature. You know, you're going to have to deal with them at one point. I yeah. mean, it'd be nice if they stop. It'd be really, really nice if they stopped. And I think a lot of people like... would probably blame it half on like project aces for not really doing much about it but i'm not sure if they really can no it's just a feature of the game that they're exploiting they had to add that feature yeah but i think the people who shouldn't be using that feature are exploiting that feature really it should be for the new players who want to get rid of higher mr players who shouldn't be in their rooms but what's really happening is we're getting some rogue high MR players who are abusing this so they can always come out on top. Mm. Now, it's nice that Project Aces gave us um, 300 aircraft research reports and also 80 special weapon research reports, but one thing that they did lack in giving us was parts. And that did make progress in the tree a lot slower than it should have been. I mean, when we got all this aircraft research and special weapons research lying around and we're just stopped by a, two parts that are just in the way, it does make things a little slower. I can see why they haven't given any, really. I can see why. Yeah, because of They how... still want to add that wall. Mm. You're still a free-to-play at the end of the day, so they're kind of... Stopping you from going too fast through the tree. And also there's the fact that there's only a limited amount of part researching you have to do. Because unlike planes, once you research a part, that's it. You've got the part and you're done. So once you've got all the parts you want to do, there's no, there's no use for them apart from converting it into aircraft research or special weapon research. And you could argue, oh, why didn't you use some of your aircraft research reports and convert them into parts? Well, it's a bit of a waste. Yeah, because, because we're saving that up for the aircraft. And we've used a lot of aircraft research reports. Like, I wouldn't convert those. They're, like, probably the best ones in the game. Yeah, they're the most important of the researches, because eventually you'll even stop using special weapons once you've researched all the special weapons you want to level 5. Now, I'm pretty much speaking for everyone at this point, but we've all have that issue with connectivity. Connection with rooms, people connecting to your room, just randomly disconnecting. We all get that problem, don't we? Yeah, and this is something that we've really faced on all three of our accounts. And um, a lot of people, they just blame it on Project Aces' servers and, you know, that they're really bad. Actually, what we've found is the majority of our disconnects are actually due to PSN cutting out. Yeah. Yeah, who knew? Like, P Project Aces' servers aren't perfect they're not the best but they're definitely better than oh, Pokemon Go. um yeah they're definitely <laughs> they're not not as bad as people say they are i think the real big issue is psn yes definitely by far yeah and i think it's due to how sony is prioritizing the ps4 uh, over the PS3 now, because the PS3 is now slowly just but being pushed into the background. Slowly but surely dying. Yeah, and that's what Infinity is on, and that's what we're going to have to deal with. Now, one um, thing that I've come across recently is um, something that got posted somewhere, in that um, this person was sent a message by someone else. The, they were in a match, and they disconnected. And the host of the room got very angry at them. <laughs> and they said, Oh, I was very sportsman-like. Uh, how dare you disconnect from my room, you coward! How dare you lose connection from my room, even though you probably had no control over it anyway. It's like... Who, who, he can't do anything. He has no choice. 
that's just gonna happen. It's not because he's a coward. <laughs> what kind of crazy whack job world are you from? crazed maddo that messaged this person i mean anyone who does like disconnect like through um rage quitting they're gonna get penalized anyway so chances are that wasn't the case yeah and although project aces's way of penalizing disconnecting is a little iffy because sometimes if you do disconnect and it wasn't your fault, sometimes they will penalise you. But it doesn't take very long to get your A mission completion rank back up to an S again. And you can always call in your buddies to bring it back up to S again. You can redeem yourself. Yeah, quite easily. It's not that big of a deal. I mean, compared to what how other games treat disconnects, Infinity's quite light-hearted on it. Right. Now it's time for a little moan. We're moaning at some people, right? that don't understand team composition. Now, what we mean by that is that when you play a match, we don't have two fighters to a team or two attackers to a team because you're going to be fighting over targets and you're not going to get an S rank. Don't do that. I think the best example will probably be have to be that recent one. So, um, what was it? Okay, so we had a room, we had a team, and we had two attackers... Someone was piston at one point, mm. and I think I was on fighter. Now, bear in mind, we have a goal for how can we have, have shit get homing. <laughs> really bad homing, okay? They probably don't know that, but anyway, so he's piston. He sees that we have one fighter and already two attackers. Guess what he chose? Freaking Black Duck. Hmm, I see we have already two attackers. Let's get another one for good measures. Why? Don't do that. Why? It's not good to do that. It is a huge problem. And it it's not just low MR people that do it. It's even high MRs. They they're very stubborn. Oh, I want to be I want to be the fighter. I don't want to go ground. Oh, I'm terrible at ground or I'm terrible at air. I can't go air. That's a stupid excuse. No. You need to have one fighter and one attacker or two multi roles because that, that's what you're meant to do. You're meant to work together. It's co-op. It's not fight against them to see who's better out of the two. Yeah, you're just going to be fighting over targets at the end of the day, and that's not what you want to do. You want the S rank. You don't want to muck up the S rank. Please do not muck up the S and rank. bear in mind, this was a hard mission, so even if he did go fight, there would have been plenty of targets for both of us. But in the end, I had to, well, basically struggle to just get everything really and that was tough it was hard yeah we shouldn't have to put up with this we're not going to put up with people being silly and going oh let's have three attackers oh yeah that will work the only exception the only exception is if it's a not concerned about results room or a challenge room because you're gonna be doing challenges well who cares or avalon or b7r because there's only fighters on b7r no if someone picks bomber on b7r i'm gonna be pretty annoyed oh yeah Please do not pick Bob from B7. <laughs> there was there was one um, person who I remember on the GameFAQs forums said, "Oh yeah, I like bringing my B1 onto B7R," and then I found out um, a couple months later that they're on the Two Chan hit list. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> for bringing their bomber to B7R and annoying people. Don't no. do that. See, at least if Don't you bring a that. fighter to Avalon, you can do something. Yeah. You've done a lot with a MiG-21 on um, B7R. Yeah, my 70k score that I got. Yeah, with Machine Gun Pod. It's uh, pretty good. You, you can do well. So, that's fine. But bringing a bomber onto B7R is just ridiculous. <laughs> You're not doing your team any favours and everyone will hate you. Please don't make people hate you. No. It's bad. Don't do it. But yeah, team composition. If you see that you already have a fighter, just switch. Be the bigger man. Now, after talking all about those really depressing, awful complaints that we have about people in the game, let's talk about some good things. Yeah. Again. Let's let's, let's up our spirits a little bit. Now, one thing that we are both extremely grateful for is the level of support that we've had from our little fan base. (laughs) You're all great. Absolutely fabulous. All five or six of you. (laughs) (laughs) You're all brilliant. And the ones that have uh, become friends of us on our Nugget account, 
You're great too. Thanks, thanks for joining us. We've, we've really enjoyed playing with you guys. Yes, and if you haven't um, had the chance to have a match with us, for better or for worse. Sorry, um, Solo Wing. <laughs> Don't worry, you can have another chance. Oh. Well, you actually, you can have as many chances as you want. Yeah, Just, whenever we're online. Yeah, when you see us online... Ask us. Don't don't hesitate. Do not hesitate to ask. We will quickly make ourselves a room and we can start playing some games. We may delay things a little if we're like waiting for a fuel or something, but you know, just just give us a shout and we'll, we'll let you join. Yeah. It, what I'd really love, what I'd really really love is if we could have like an eight player room with just everyone in there. Yeah, that would be great. I would love to do that at some point. Eventually. We may organize something like that eventually, but for now, for now, we'll, let's just have some we'll, random we'll matches together. Two. You know, it's a load of fun. Yeah. The other thing that we have found great is our planes. Oh, I love our that. beautiful, beautiful planes. I love our Excel. I love our Red Baron. I Red Baron's like my favorite album. Gold Falcon's four of them. great, and so is Mobius Eight. Yeah, and that rhymes. <laughs> we have. It's been one month, and we've already got four planes. Two at level 10 and two at level 9. We'll get into that a bit later on, but the fact that we've already got great planes this early on is just great. It's amazing. We, getting, we are at a really good level right now. Getting one level 10 was hard enough back then. Now it's just easy. It's really easy. Yeah, so anyone can do it. As long as you keep focused on four planes or three planes or something like that. Just... Pick your favourites and keep focused on them. You'll be fine. The big issue we're going to have now, however, is getting those planes past level 10. Because now we're starting to hit the millions. So progression on our planes is going to start to slow down a little bit. Mm. If we thought that the special weapons starting researching was a big wall, this is an even bigger wall. But it's a wall we can overcome. We've got a strategy we thought of so we're gonna be initially initializing yes that very soon mm. but now we must move on to our next section boy this section was long i know we now move on to special weapon corner after actually we won't have any ads will we no not but really. in a minute yeah in a second <laughs> in a millisecond hello everyone and welcome to special weapon corner a corner where we talk about special weapons. It's kind of dull. But let's talk about special weapons. The special weapons we'll be talking about this week are the LAAM, the SAAM, and the QAAM. Uh, and now on to my co-host, uh, Fax, to tell me, and you, about LAAMs. Um, why are we doing a voice for this? Actually, let's not do a voice for no. this. This is bad. Anyway, LAAM, my my favourite out of the three weapons that we got lined up for today. Um, the trolling weapon. Uh, <laughs> so, okay, so this weapon was introduced quite late in the game. Uh, mo the first few planes to actually get this was the MiG-31B and the F-22A Mobius-1. So the main gimmick with LAM is its insane lock-on range. Far higher than the HVAA's lock-on range, however it is a lot slower than HVAA. Uh, it's more powerful than HCA and HVAA. The MiG-31's LAMs are just over 40% more powerful than its HCAAs, and the MiG-31B's Gaviria's LAMs are exactly 50% more powerful than its HCAAs at level 5. Now. Uh, the whole more powerful thing, this is all based off something called the Aircraft Assembler, which is this Japanese-made um, calculator that takes planes and tells you how powerful everything is. Power of LAAMs and other special weapons depends on your plane, so please check the website for more information. We'll put it in the description for you to go on. Now, my main use for LAAMs is probably Team Deathmatch. I don't really use them in co-op often. And I don't really use them that seriously either. In Team Deathmatch, I kind of use them as a trolling weapon. I literally stick on max homing and max range. There's some range parts that you can put on that do lower your reload, but it increases the range so much. And I literally get my new comm, fly away, like really far away, and just 
annoy people, fire LAMs at them. Eventually they get really annoyed and actually come to like kill me. But yeah, I kind of just use them as a trolling weapon. They're not, I don't know, in cop they're, they're okay. They definitely do the range thing better than HVAA. But I find with HVAA that extra speed makes it hit targets easier. Mm. Right, now it's time to talk about the SAAM. Now, I find these really fun. These are really fun weapons to use. Now, what it is, is that you fire a missile and it aims for an enemy within a circle, the steering circle. Now, what you can do with this is you can actually fire it wherever you want on the screen. And as long as you keep the enemy within that circle, it should hit it. And more than likely, because SAAMs are really powerful, They'll take it out. They're not quite as powerful as a HPAA though. On a MiG-21 BIS, which has both HPAA and SAAM, uh, the HPAA is 14% more powerful, and on Viper, which is the more powerful special plane, they're 16% more powerful. So yeah, they're pretty powerful, but not quite as powerful. They do have great range. Um, they've been known throughout the series to have very, very good range. But the one downside to SAAM is when you're trying to keep the enemy inside that circle, you are going to let yourself be vulnerable to attack. So make sure nothing's about to hit you. Otherwise, you may have like five missiles up your backside before you even get one SAAM at your enemy. I'd say even getting a decent distance somewhere off the beaten path so no one really notices you is probably the best place to use mm. it. Um, SAAM also, according to that aircraft assembler I mentioned earlier, gets a two times damage bonus. So if a SAAM does 2,500 damage, let's say, it will do 5,000 damage to a TU-160. Uh, that was one that it mentioned. It may have a damage bonus on other planes, but it never says. So if you lot can test that one out and you found that it does do a times two damage bonus, please do tell us in the comments. Right, the last weapon we have for this week is the QAM. Now, if you're expecting uh, this to be as powerful as it used to be, like in Ace Combat 4, yeah, think again. It's not as good as those games. Like, using this weapon at level 1 without any additional homing parts, it's not going to circle jerk and hit the target like it used to. If you want that to if you want it to do that, you're going to have to invest parts and money into leveling it up. And really, it's your standard missiles that are going to be doing that when you put stacked homing on. That's um when people talk about stacked homing in Team Deathmatch, they're not talking about QAMs, they're talking about standard missiles. So those are really what you've got to be careful of. But QAMs do have an advantage over standard missiles, and that is something that you can do called off-bore firing, which means that you're firing at a target that's at an odd angle. So say that it's gone past you a little bit, you can still fire your QAM and it will just turn around and try and hit it. You have a little more time to fire than you would with standard missiles. So you've got a little bit more freedom with QAMs than you do with your standards. Um, in terms of power, they're a bit weaker than HPAAs. Um, HPAAs on the Yellow 13 are almost 50% more powerful than a QAAM. But, um, in terms of power compared to standard missiles, on Yellow 13, they're actually as powerful as a level 20 standard missile. So that's pretty powerful. Their reload isn't too bad either, and they have decent range as well, uh, compared to standard missiles. I mean, they work really great with standard missiles. It's like an in-between between the HCAA and the HPAA, if you want something in the middle. Right, for our highlights of the week this week, we decided to pick two matches that we had with you guys. And for my one, I was playing with Tundra Meadow. Uh, I was using our Red Baron while well, he was using a very nice MiG-31. And I've got to say, the match was pretty good. Yeah, it was quite a close match from what it looked like. Um, you took ground, obviously. Oh yeah, with uh, the FAB of death on Paris. Yes. And uh, yeah, wow, the game went really, really smoothly. Tundra Meadow was taking out all the air targets really well. Did a really good job, actually. Mm -hmm. It was just a great game. Uh, even though I was going for ground, I did occasionally pick out the 
uh, occasional air target. Yeah, pistons are generally slightly better against air than they are ground. And I think by the end of the match there were a few air targets still lying around when I ran out of ground targets to take out. But it was pretty close. Yeah, it was I pretty would say. close in the end. Um, it was a great match. Yeah, definitely. Really enjoyed that. It was fun playing with you, mate. Um, now it's time for my highlight. Um, this is harking back to our very first episode of The Nugget Report, where we talked about a player called Dolly No Fighter, and this was another match that I've had with them. And uh, we had it on Weapons Base, and um, they decided to use their um, White Tiger, which they also used back when we talked about it on the first episode. And I decided to use Gold Falcon. Now, Gold Falcon, good as it is, has pretty poor homing. Mm -hmm. But it held up pretty well. 80, 80k by the end. Yes. Pretty good. It was a great score. Um, Dolly managed to score a very high number as well. SFFS did very well. Obviously, using S. Yeah, yeah, SFFS. That's it. SFFS, which is great on weapons base. Mm. Um, and for a multi roll, it does. And especially white, mm. with its low base CST, actually did great. Yeah. It must be pretty high level, like our gold falcon. <laughs> no, yeah, um, we uh, exchanged a few messages afterwards, and uh, they're like, "Oh yes, my white one. Of course, it's great." <laughs> oh of yeah, course it beat you. Yes, that was very cocky. It's dude. very cocky, <laughs> but we like that. We like that. We like that a lot. We. We love players that are A, good, and B, cocky. <laughs> because we're good, and we're cocky. But, like, cocky in a good way, you know, like the kind of jokey manner. Yeah, we want... Yeah, we like that. You know. And actually, Tundra Meadow, I would like to say we were very offended by that comment that you sent us over PSN. Oh, why would I want to play with you guys? It's because we have an award-winning TV YouTube spectacular. Awarded by me, McDonald's. Grand sponsor not take it or Christmasta. Wow, you had to do that, didn't you? Oh, of course. And I obviously said that wrong as well. Definitely. Wait, that was that was the worst impression of the. Of Grand Sponsor Lady. <laughs> I love that person though. Oh, but there's a male version of it as well. Yeah, when we were watching Jordan. <laughs> oh, now we're talking about anime and not I plates. think we're really going off topic. We are really going off topic. Hey, but seriously, watch Jordan Sunshine. Right. 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 I can't help myself. No, 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 no. You should be recommending people to watch. My brain's like processing right now. What's that anime called that like everyone... Oh, Idol Master! Yeah! Yeah, watch... watch that! Yeah, you know the Idol Master planes in Infinity? Watch that. Yeah! Watch actually Space Battleship Yamato 2199. Awesome. Really? Yeah, it's really <laughs> off it's yeah, watch that too. <laughs> it was a highlight Stop! of several weeks ago. Stop! Let's go, let's move on. Okay, thanks guys for playing. Um we might do more highlights with um, Watch anime, anime guys! Shut up! <laughs> we might do more highlights with community members, so keep playing with us and you may appear on the show. Okay, now it's time for our summary, talking about what has happened on our account. And this week, things have been quite slow, but we have made some important gains. Now, our planes haven't had much progress, three no, of them at least. No levels really gained, just slot points. Actually, Sky Kid went up to level 9. Oh, yes it did. It did, yes, and that is that. where it shall stay for now. For the time being, because like, to level 10 it's like 1.4 million. Yes. And we're like really low on funds at the moment. Yes, so um, the XL gained one slot and the Sky Kid also gained one slot. Um, XL's got seven, Gold Falcon's got ten, Mobius 8's got none, and Red Baron has four. Interestingly enough, Mobius 8's really close to getting one. 
Yeah, I reckon, seems like we have been using it enough to make it get one. I reckon two more times sixes, or maybe three, we'll probably finish it mm. to get one slot. We don't really need it, but yeah, you know, it's good to have, I guess. Um, really, the biggest progress we actually made this week was on parts. We ended up getting Gunpower L, which for Red Baron is absolutely essential. A really, really, really big deal. Because Red Baron, although good, he only has one gun and rate of fire isn't super great. So getting more power on that gun is just a godsend. And it's so boy, good. is it good. It is so good. Just imagine it with L range, L power, and L power. Oh my god. At a higher level as well. Mm. Um, we also got Missile Power L, which has been really handy on Mobius 8, because it has the slots for it. And of course, XL was able to get it as well, which has been handy in taking out the a few red targets as well. Up to Typhoons and SMTDs can now be taken out in one shot. Mm -hmm. We're very, very close to taking MiG-21s. We we'll need to level it up one more time for that. And with our special weapons, our FABs now remain at level 3, while our HCAAs are at level 2. Um, leveling up special weapons is really good gonna put it on hold for a little bit until we get the parts we need then I'm really hoping we can start upgrading we'll, we'll get HCAA to three and then get the rest of them to four mm. we'll do them one at a time but really at the moment we really really need more money the far end of the tree down where the XO2 is hindrance that it is yeah, yeah it's, um, it's pretty hectic down there. It's really expensive. The XO2 is like 700,000 credits already, and all the parts around it are 200, 300, 400,000 credits. And once we get to buy like LL compressor and that, then we got to move back up um, and to, go where, back around again. to where the F14D is, so we can get all the parts up there. Because there's um, L uh, reload for stand missiles and. L reload homing? On. Yeah, L homing. L, homing. L reload on bombs. There are a lot of good parts up there, and I think after that we'll probably go to where the bombers are down the bottom, but we'll see. We'll yeah, see about we'll, that. we'll see where we go next. Right, so before we sign off, we've got a little competition that we want to start up. Now, we like naming our aircraft sets. We really like doing that. We think it adds a bit of charm to our planes. This week, we're going to host a competition for who can or suggest the best name for our Gold Falcon set. Now, the best name that we find and we judge best in the comments becomes the name of the set. Now, before you do give us a suggestion, make sure it fits in the, um, in the box. Otherwise, well, when we put your nickname in and it don't fit, then we're going to get really disappointed. Yeah. Be creative. Make us laugh. If it makes us laugh, then you've got a higher chance of getting in because we love silly and funny names like for my toilet plane. Oh, I just said the nickname, didn't I? Toilet plane or how I call um, uh, Yayoi Ten Yen because she always plays around with a Ten Yen coin or um, how oh, I... Oh, biscuit plane. Biscuit plane for, for the, the MiG-21 21 bis. Mm -hmm. Biscuit plane. Or how I call my um, pixie laser buddy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I call, um, what was, it? what was it? Oh yeah, I think when I used to have heartbreak, I used to call it kid. Yeah, you did, yeah. Mm. And um, Iori is called forehead, because she has a massive forehead. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so competition deadline is next Wednesday. So you've got until then to give us a suggestion. So yeah, that's the 10th of August. Remember that date? Get it in before then, and we will consider and we will announce the winner on next week's Nugget Report. Suggest in the comments below or through PSN, however you like. We don't mind. Yeah. Anyway, with that said, come back next week for another episode of the Nugget Report, starting the second month. So until then, we'll see you guys later. Goodbye.